let's have a look at our question here. It says study the diagram below. Now, just checking this out, people, this is a perfect question on protein synthesis. First thing we do, we look at what our labels are. So stage Y, this is going to be trans, mm, transcription and this is translation. Okay, we are going to translate. Transcription is the recipe and the reading of the recipe, like the analogy I used last week, and this is translation, translating that recipe so we can make our cake. Okay, what we've got here is our DNA, double-stranded helix DNA, and this here is going to be our messenger RNA, and that is going to be our codon, or our codons. There are going to be lots. So there's one, two, three, four codons here. Okay, structure W is going to be the nuclear membrane. And these are going to be the nuclear pores. Okay, so there's your little pore here. There's a little pore and there's a little pore. And that's where the messenger RNA is going to move through here. Okay, this organelle B is the ribosome. And each of these little guys here, this is your transfer RNA and your transfer RNA and its anticodons. And what's the job of the transfer RNA? It carries amino acids, very, very specific amino acids, because your transfer RNA has um, a very specific shape on its anticodon, and it will pick up a complementary uh, um, uh, amino acid which then matches as a complementary base set to what's on the messenger RNA. And I'm going to explain that to you now very, very carefully. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to go all the way down. I need for you to understand this very carefully. If I have DNA, all right, and I have my messenger RNA, which is a code on, it codes from the DNA, and I have my T, which is the transfer RNA. People, if you understand what I'm doing here now, I promise you now you will get full marks for any protein synthesis questions. Okay, if the DNA, let's make up a nonsense one. So let's say GAT, okay? The messenger RNA is going to be complementary. So the complementary uh, um, basis for G is C. For A is going to be, now remember, in RNA, we have adenine to uracil and guanine to cytosine. Okay, so G to C. A is going to be to T, but there are no T's in RNA, so it's going to be a U. And T to A. So there's my first one. Now, messenger RNA and transfer RNA, they are also complementary. So... If this says C-U-A, this is going to be G-A-U. Why? Because it is RNA. Now look at this. G-A-T, G-A-U. What's the difference? Only the U. Okay. So your DNA and your transfer RNA are going to be the same. The only difference is that DNA has thymine and RNA has uracil. Let's do another example. Um, let's go uh, C, um, C, A, G, CAG, okay? I mean, I'm sucking these things out of my thumb. So your messenger RNA anticode, uh, I mean, codon is going to be complementary. So what is complementary? We're going to have C to G, A to T, but there's no T in RNA, so it's going to be U, and G to C. And my, mess, and my transfer RNA is going to be C, A, G. Exactly the same as the DNA. If you understand what I've just explained to you now, I promise you, promise you, promise you, there's not a question they can ask you on protein synthesis that you're going to battle with. Okay, right, now let's get to our questions. So zip, 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 and we are all the way up here. Name the process represented diagram. Oh, that's easy. It is protein syn 
the cis. Now, people, synthesis means to make. So it literally tells you it's to make protein. All righty. Now, identify X, organelle B, and structure W. So organelle B, uh, messenger RNA, a ribosome, and nuclear membrane. So X is your messenger RNA. Oh, wow. Look, the colors match. The organelle is your ribosome. And structure W, which we've already labeled, is the nuclear membrane. That is a piece of cake. So far, you've got full marks, okay? Full, full marks. Right. I don't know when it's going to start getting difficult because this is a walk in the park, guys. This is a walk in the park. Give the sequence of the nitrogenous bases for the first codon on molecule X. Okay. Sequence of bases for the first codon on molecule X. There's our first codon. You see here? One, two, and three. That's our first codon. So that's going to be What's opposite to T? It's going to be A. Opposite to G, C is going to be G. And opposite to A is going to be, it should be T, but it's going to be U. Remember, adenine to uracil and guanine to cytosine. Okay, I'm going to put a T here just so that you remember. Okay, so A, G, U. Let's do the others quickly and just get some practice here. So that will be G, C, a and we're going to run out of space to write here this is tta so we're going to say that this one here is going to be a a u and c will be g t is a and a is u so there we've got our combinations okay our triplet bases so when they say um what was our question oh. Uh, the sequence of for 1, 2, and 3, 1, 2, and 3 is A, G, U. A, G, and U. I mean, how easy is this? Okay, remember the DNA would have then been T, C, A. So, A, G, U. Next one. Give the correct order in which the molecules P, Q, R, and S would attach to the molecule X. So, okay. What they want you to do is, based on these triplet bases here and the codons, they want you to see which anticodon. So, we look, TCA is going to be UCA. So, there's UCA, so this will be number one. Okay, next one is CGU. So, CGU, there we go, is number two. Next one is uh, going to be UU, uh, am I right? UU. A, U, U, A, that's number three, and this one clearly is number four. So it's going to be S, R, P, and Q. S, R, P, Q. Okay, that's our order. That's what they wanted. How did we find it? Well, we went and we looked. Remember, transfer RNA is the same as the DNA, except that what are we going to do? We're going to change adenine to uracil and guanine to cytosine. All right. Now, if it says your transfer RNA, remember, is the same as the DNA. So, if it's T, C, A, it is going to be, um, sorry, it's going to be U, G, A. So all you're doing is instead of the T's, you're writing U's. Other than that, it's exactly the same when you're looking at transfer RNA. Remember that, please. All righty. Next question. Oops. Where in the cell does the stage Z occur? Stage Z, if I remember correctly, was here. And that's translation, which is in the cytoplasm. Hmm. Okay, remember that the, the translation, translation occurs in the cytoplasm where the ribosome is and transcription is in the nucleus. So transcription is when DNA makes RNA. Translation is when RNA makes protein and that is the simplest way of putting it. All right, it says here, next question. Describe the process of transcription 
as seen in Y. Okay, I need space for this, so I'm going to go zip down here, and I'm trying to get... Okay, so to answer this, please, there's six points, people. You must know these six points. Transcription. Okay, it's transcription. This is when DNA makes RNA. Now, you will, in an exam, get two of these three. How, uh, uh, um, DNA replication, six points. Transla uh, transcription, six points. Translation, five points. So, you have to learn 17 points. All of you, and I know this for a fact, all of you can memorize a song that you, all the lyrics for a song that you hear on the radio in five minutes without a problem. And you can sing that song like a karaoke song without looking anywhere for the words. Okay, if you can do that, I promise you now you can learn 17 facts for, for transcription, translation and DNA replication because you will in an exam get at least two of those three. All right, so make a song out of it. Um, Valentine's Day is coming up soon. So you guys and girls, do a Valentine's song to one of your friends to remember transcription and translation and replication. Okay, so here we go. Very strange song, but yeah. All right, number one. Okay, this is point number one. The double helix. DNA molecule unwinds. Okay, so it's gone from being twisted to unwinding just like it did for replication. So now we've got this little straight ladder shape. Okay, number two. All right, once it's unwound, it now unzips. Okay, easy. As weak hydrogen bonds break. And DNA separates into two strands okay so it separates into two strands we go all the way up here what's happened there there's my dna it separates into two strands you've got your rna comes in and and comp with complementary bases all the way along here and then zoops, it closes up again so where are we it unzips as the weak hydrogen bonds break, okay, number three, number three, number three, okay, then one DNA, okay, just one of them, strand forms the template, okay, so now we've got our template, and number four, what happens then? Um, we have the free floating RNA nucleotides in nucleoplasm. What do they do? They then, number five, join with the complementary Oh, such a long word, complementary bases of the DNA template. Okay, that's exactly what they've done. All right, they've just formed that and then, let's just zap this a little bit. Okay, so they've now joined with a complementary DNA template and remember, you're going to have adenine to thymine and guanine to cytosine and you're going to have instead of uh, for RNA instead of thymine you're going to have uracil and our last little point is to code for a new d uh, a new what am i doing a new strand of messenger RNA codons okay codons they've coded the dna so that's how your codons work 
All right. Um, people, six points. I'm going to go back to our diagram. I just, I need for you to understand this. Okay. Here's our diagram. And our diagram tells you everything. You've got your double helix molecule, the DNA unwinds. Then it unzips. So it opens up here. Okay. And what happens? We are going to now have the RNA, the, the RNA that floats around in the nucleoplasm. What's going to happen? It's going to now pair up with the complementary DNA bases. And that's how our messenger RNA is formed. All right. And then when the messenger RNA is ready and to rock and roll, what does it do? We now have our codons and they slip through that nuclear pore into the cytoplasm and it boogies on to the ribosome where protein is going to be made during translation.